All right. So, um, so Jeff, it is hey. so hey. nice to talk to you. When we had our little practice session the other day, I mentioned that this was our first time meeting. And you said, oh, no, Anne, not true. So let's get that out of the way. When did we meet? Okay. So, and, and I honestly, I didn't just dream this. We actually did, did meet briefly. So, no, <laughs> just kidding. All right. So we met, I'm going to guess it was about 2015 or so. Do you remember when the uh, CPSA show was in um, Tacoma? Tacoma, yes. Okay. Well, that was the location. <laughs> and so what happened, um, I was, I had been out doing something, my wife and I, and we were coming back into the hotel where it was being held. And uh, you were not exiting. I, I went in and saw you were going to be exiting. There was a gaggle of people around you. So it, and I, I told my wife, oh, that's Anne. I want to go just say hi to her. But, and so I had to wait my turn. Um, and which I, I patiently did. Um, and then I, I came up to you and, and I, I just said, you know, hi, and I'm, I'm Jeff George. And, and uh, you said, oh, oh, it's so nice to meet you. I thought you would be taller. <laughs> I'm not really down for diplomacy. I know. I love that. That, that. that just made me laugh. And, but the thing is, you know, I, I identify as taller. That I, <laughs> but that was it. That was our meeting. Okay. And we just spoke for a moment. I mean, okay. just a, a minute or, or so less. It's very and then, nice to meet you again. And may so, I say that you look taller on Zoom. <laughs> on, on screen, I, I really do. <laughs> so, um, well, great. Well, that was fun, fun introduction. And, um, before we go over to your art, which is sort of the main part of these connect sessions, um, let's just, uh, you know, dig a little bit into who you are. Cause you have, I mean, like every, oh, I feel like long timers anyway, know your art, right? Mm -hmm. They know your name. I'm not sure how much we know about you because you don't typically teach, right? And that's where kind of where people get to know people more have you taught for cpsa any of their uh no no, no i there's a, a chapter that's contacted me um recently and you know we're talking about perhaps a workshop in spring but again i i and i think i told you this off you know earlier today um is that uh i i really enjoy beginners and so when it comes to people that already know how to put pencil to paper pretty well it's like, what do you want? I, I, I don't know what to show you. You know how to put it down. Just use your brain and figure something out. But, uh, <laughs> now, but no, you're, you don't about wanna... to, you're about to destroy my business. No, 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 no. I want to do just the opposite. <laughs> I mean, I know, but I totally understand what you're saying because of, I think of you as a real artist, you know, so, so, but where did you start? Where did your art world start? Well, first of all, you're in uh, Boise. Yeah, uh, we moved to, my wife and I moved up to uh, Boise, actually a little north of Boise and a little uh, community called Avamore, which is, um, it's neat. It's, it's outside of the city limits up in the foothills and very yeah. scenic and really nice. And, and we moved there at the beginning of the year, uh, this being oh, 2022. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, and uh, so before that you were in Vegas? Mm -hmm. Lived there for five years and prior to that, uh, entirely in Southern California. Okay. So you've been in the West coast forever. Oh yeah. Oh, forever. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and I see that you're an extremely neat person. You're in your studio and there's nothing out of play. I didn't want to have anything in back there to distract. Oh, I <laughs> see, I think this stuff through too much. <laughs> wow. Well, it looks super neat and tidy. But tell us where you, how you started art. How I started art. Well, I think it's one of those things. Um, how far back do you want me to go? So when I was an embryo, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> No, um, so as a kid, right, you're in, in school and, and you kind of know when you do art or projects, you kind of know, hey, 
this came out better than the other students or they're all commenting on it and and you're just like wow I, this is something i could do so of course all that that stuff started early on and i would just uh and nurture it my you know parents were supportive of it and everything like that so uh and just continue that on through grade school high school um into um took a couple of years at a JC, did that, and then went to uh, Otis Parsons uh, in Los Angeles. Oh, you did. Now that's uh -huh. very, very, oh, you very. You want very a big good. reveal? You want a big reveal? Sure. I, I didn't finish. I never oh. graduated. No, and that's not because I wasn't, I was failing. I was doing great. It's excellent. Uh, I was, I was, I was um, thriving, but I, I was, I see, I was putting myself through school. So it all came from me. Uh, my uh, family situation was meager. And so I, there was no um, privilege, no entitlement, anything like that for me. My, my uh, roots were much more uh, modest. Um, so yeah, I, I put myself through school, just working part-time jobs and things like that. What did you do as a young adult? Or, or, um, and I'd already actually done a little professional work. Do you, have you ever heard of a book? It used to be out, and I think it's still printed. It's called The Artist's Market. Yes. Ever, yes, yeah, everybody's like, yes. So I was, I don't know, I was 19, 20 years old, maybe. I don't know exactly, right around that time. And uh, I just happened to come across this book, you know, like Barnes & Noble or a bookstore or something like that. And I'm like, what is, I had no clue what it was. I, I, see, I had no mentors or anything. Everything I figured out, I had to figure out on my own, pretty much. Um, so I got this book and I realized what it was. It had names of, of uh, publishers for uh, magazines and advertising agencies, design. I'm like, I can, well, this is professional work. Maybe I can do this. And I, I made, I went and printed up a, oh, a promotional two-sided flyer and, and and at the time and that you remember there weren't computers and so i had i did like all the text was press type and it was all perfect and and it was just um very much uh, diy but i mailed those things out i looked at you know all the contact information in that book and i mailed them all out hundreds of them and so excited and Oh, and then one came back. Here's a novel that came back. Yes. And I opened up and there's my first rejection letter. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they bothered they bothered to write you a rejection. I'd write. <laughs> wow. well, at least they didn't send it back torn up or something like that. But uh, but but you know what? I did end up finally getting my first professional work there. Um, the first professional uh, illustration job I had done was for tech, it was for a magazine that was uh, produced for bikers. It's called Easy Riders. And it was out in the time. Um, anyway, that was my first uh, professional job. It, they, it was an article. So it was, um, it was a fictional article. And then I did it basically an editorial illustration. Right. For it. And then they hired me more. And then a few others started to come in. And so I had done some professional work. And that was prior to going to um, Otis Parsons uh, Art Institute. Oh my gosh. So when I showed my portfolio there, I already had professional work in place a little bit, um, but I still had it. And those those early works were mostly done in, in uh, graphite. Oh, so when did you start concentrating on color pencil? Well, that, um, so going back to those uh, college days at Otis Parsons, um, I had an instructor there. I had already done some colored pencil things, you know, just learning. But he, this class he taught was in was colored pencil. So he taught a colored pencil class, and that was where I I fell in love with it then. And that's where I learned to burnish. For example, that was a new thing. It had always been a lighter touch uh, technique for me, but there I learned to burnish, and it was all with Prismacolor, and, um, and that was a game changer for me. I. I filed that away. And so then when I eventually started my career, I was an illustrator, freelance illustrator out of Southern California for a long time. And I specialized really in black and white, um, graphite, starting with graphite, but our, the art directors would be like, this is beautiful, but we're so worried about how it will reproduce. 
they'd asked if I would do could do any pen and ink. So I could, <laughs> and I switched to stipple. Do you remember what? Maybe some of the you know some of the folks uh, watching know what that is, but it's essentially making art in in dots, right? Um, but I, I did that successfully for a long time. And when I did have an occasional uh, color piece to do, it would be in colored pencil or colored pencil mixed with, oh, a little airbrush, if you <laughs> another old time uh, technique or uh, a mixed media marker, maybe something like that. But yeah, so, and I did, anyway, I did illustration freelance for a very long time. At one point I had uh, artist reps or agents. I had one in LA for a long time. And then uh, uh, eventually had one in New York as well. Things were going real great, you know, it was, it was going, going fine. And then it changed and it, uh, it became tougher. And you know what, what changed? And it wasn't just for me, it was for a lot of illustrators, was uh, the computer and computer graphics. Right. All right. That was like early 90s or so. It, it wasn't photography so much as, and it feels like, a lot of stuff that used to be drawn mm -hmm. is is kind of like photographs now, but maybe now it is. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, so you mean like so everybody could do a little bit of computer right. So, graphics. for example, I did a lot of um, advertising. So now advertising agencies would just take somebody in house, teach them the pro uh, program, say Illustrator or at the oh, time okay. Freehand, that sort of thing, and then th they would just do their own or think they could have somebody that would do their own. Oftentimes it wasn't very good, but you know, they didn't have to pay out for that. Right. Is this so, a good time to ask you about AI or should we wait until later? Well, I, that's a, <laughs> no, let's wait till later on. Okay, but that's, right. I just thought really, maybe there was a progression there. There yeah. is a little bit, yes, there is a little bit. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just say, I'll let you want me to tease it? How about that? Sure. No. <laughs> well, I just think it, because right now AI in art is a is a big thing, and it's that it's improving and improving and improving. And uh, I have a little prediction. I think it will be the death of the illustrator. Well, I was going to ask. So when did you when did you stop illustrating, or did so? Are, so what I did back then, when things got got tough, is I had had to make some big choices. And one of the choices I made was, it's like, I think I'm gonna go learn this thing called the computer and these computer programs and everything like that. So there was um, a place in Orange County, California that was, you know, had all these classes and they had a, a special deal where uh, it costs more, uh, but you could take and retake classes over and over. And I decided to bite the bullet and, and do that. Um, I didn't even have a computer. You understand? <laughs> I would I would just go to th these classes and work on the computers there. And at the beginning, the first few courses I took, I was absolutely lost. I, I what? Oh, you have to save it? <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I was I was absolutely lost. But I tell you what, and by the end of the semester, I had taken and retaken classes, Adobe Illustrator, PageMaker, the old, old programs like that, mm -hmm. Work Express. And, but by the end of the semester, uh, where at the beginning of the semester, I was the one asking people, can you help me you know, to my uh, neighboring student? And then uh, by the end of the semester, it was the other way around. So it, it clicked, it really went well, I got it, I understood it. Uh, after completion of that, I made a, the choice to actually go buy myself a computer and these programs. And, and I didn't even have internet on my computer. I just had the programs and would practice them. Um, and not too long after that, um, not too long after that, I got a, a freelance job. For, it was in-house. I'd always worked out of my home, but this one was at a, a toy company. Uh, they made uh, children's educational products and toys. Uh, in Carson, California, and I went in and started freelancing for them. It was, it worked very well. Um, and a long story short, I freelanced for them for four years, got hired by them, uh, called Lakeshore Learning Materials. And uh, 
And I spent the next 20 years as an illustrator and designer in-house. Um, and sometime during my time there um, is when I started doing my own thing again in color pencils. Now we can go to that. Now, yeah, now we can go. Sorry about that. It's, it's been, see you asked and it's been a long career, so. Yeah, and uh, you segued so nicely. I mean, your own, you know, life from the illustration to in-house or from freelancing to in-house. I mean, you did a nice mm -hmm. transition there. Um, so let's see, I'm going to share the screen so we can now go look at Jeff's amazing work. And, um, but before we start talking about this fork, let's see, what was I going to ask you? Why isn't it moving down? Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Me? I can. You're frozen for me. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we're back. Okay, Whew, that scared me. Hey. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you never know. Uh, what was I going to ask you? Uh, okay, so you went, but in, oh, uh, somehow, I guess I thought because your work is so, it feels to me so intense, I always assumed that you worked, that you were, that you just did fine art, that there wasn't, um, you know, but, but when I look at the work, I guess it, then I can say, oh, yes, clearly there's an illustration background. Uh, your ability to draw anything is a big clue. Well, and you know what? That for me is a big thing. Uh, I, and that you're right. That comes from having a background in illustration. Um, I, when I started doing this, one of my uh, goals was to do a little of everything, right? I did not want to be a pigeonholed into just doing one thing or one subject matter uh, over and over. I, that's yeah. that's just me. I, I would go crazy to do that. If I do a series on something, it'll be short, brief, maybe, uh, I don't know, three, no more than five. So I always tell everybody the only way to 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 make it get get a name is to do a series. And <laughs> you, of course, you have, there has no. to be somebody who breaks the rules. <laughs> A small series. I won't. I don't want to do the same thing my entire yeah. life. That's really. So, what is the oldest piece that we're looking? The like? oldest like piece would be the one with the dolphins called the return. That would be the that and that's um, that was done a long time ago, uh, over over twenty years ago. I would I would say, um, and that was I called it the return because to me it was a return to a medium that I hadn't used in a while and that I, I, I loved doing. This is probably the only work I have on there which is not in my source material. It is um, and I, I got permission. It was from a, a book of animals and uh, I changed it quite a bit. The, the, the entire image was probably about 40% larger. There was a fourth dolphin. I moved things around, uh, just like an illustrator might do. Uh, so. Yeah, right. So but that was I, my first attempt. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this aquamarine paper. Uh, I, I guessed at it. And, oh, uh, okay. So okay. It, whatever it was like, a uh, it was like an aqua or teal type Paper. Oh, I see the color. The color. Oh, okay, okay. But it was Canson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, you have this like texture. I I just assumed that was the paper. It it is the paper. I'm but so uh, so when I work on the Mitiantes or the Canson, have you worked on that before? That pastel. No, paper? I really haven't. It it always feels too thin for me. Right. It's a very thin paper. But um, it has one side that's very textural and right. the other side that's smoother. It still has the light texture. And that's the side I worked on was the, uh, the smoother side. I, I have a, a quest for detail. <laughs> so I tend yeah. to work towards smoother papers. I, I absolutely love this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that it was one of your earlier pieces. But I mean, even though it was an earlier all color pencil piece, that doesn't mean it was an early piece of yours, you know? No, I had, I had right. right. It was... It was my first attempt at what I would call a colored pencil as a fine art piece. Right. Yeah. Prior, prior to that, I'd only used colored pencil uh, in illustration. Yeah, it's fabulous. I mean, it's, I just love it. And then where would we move next? 
uh, let's see uh, if you want to go chronologically. I think, and again, it's I don't have a, everything I've done, just right. uh, this, but I think the crumpled denim, um, yeah, it's kind of iconic. Yeah, yep, that one. I don't think I had seen any denim, you know, really in color pencil when I first saw this, which this one goes back a long way too. It does. This was the second or third piece I had done. And I don't, I never noticed the button before. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I noticed the button, but I never, oh my gosh. So those of you watching at home probably can't see it, but it says around the button, Jeff George. Oh my yeah, gosh, how had I missed that her. before? I, I think this must be in one of the CP, uh, uh, best of CP books. It, it might be, I don't, it's been in a few things. It was in a, you know, what? Uh, drawing magazine long ago and things like that. The funny thing, it, it's it's also on uh, the uh, Canson Mitantis paper again on the smooth side, but on an indigo paper. Um, but it's not large. It's only six by nine. Wow, it's tiny. Yes. Well, then how did you? I just how did. did. <laughs> how did you get all those lines? Uh, you know, I just sharp pencils. How's that? And really, really steady. You have a very steady hand. I do. I, I should have been a surgeon, but you know, uh, yeah, I, had to, I had to pick something less successful. <laughs> does, a, <laughs> does a steady hand? I mean, are you taught a steady hand in art school at all? Is there any? No, no. It's just me. It's just how I put it down. How did you not go insane? I don't know if the people in the webinar can see this as well as you know, I can, that you see every little line of the denim. I will say one of the keys was when I would do a line across um, one of the planes there, I may not do the entire line at once. I, and oh. usually I wouldn't, it, it, it would be a part and then join it, and then another part to complete the, the entire line. I'm not sure that makes it any easier, but it might've made it more accurate. It would be hard to, you know, to all the contours. Yes, to do all the contours in a, you know, one continuous line. That would be yes, hard. exactly. It's just a masterpiece, isn't it? <sighs> and so you noticed I called it crumpled denim number one. That was because I was going to do a little series on it, and I had other ones shot. And I just, again, this is me. I just moved on to something else entirely, and I actually met, might redraw this same one. Or, or another one, but much larger. Uh, oh, right. It's just something I've kicked around for a while, but yeah, I never want to. Never yeah. what? <laughs> I, I, I told you, I, I just I want, found something else. It's like finding something shiny and you're, ooh, look at, look at this. And then uh, you just oh. move on to it. Oh, that's great. Where would you like to go next? Wherever, wherever you okay. wish. Well, I this from doubt to just, Decision. Let's see. The, oh, I see. Okay. Uh -huh. so this so is the large that's the full piece. piece. Right. Okay. That's the full piece. Yeah. Uh, and we don't have any dates on these, do we? I beg your pardon? There's, is, you don't date, you don't typically. Oh, date. no, I, I should. I, I could have if you if wanted. I, I'm going to guess I finished that one. Uh, let's see. 2016 2017 no 2017 let's so not say. that not that long ago no no it had been i had started it years before that like several years and had part of it done stopped went on to do other things and i i, I will do that once in a while too especially with really large complex pieces i might do them for a while just finally say i had enough for a while put it away but i almost always eventually take them back out and finish them and this is the case with this. And we had, this was during, I had this one in work um, during our move from California to Las Vegas, for example. And so when I got to Las Vegas, I said, oh, I need something to have done for shows. And this one wasn't going to be done in time. So eventually I uh, brought it back and decided to finish it. So I see that it's, um, you've used some ink tabs and that it's on a watercolor paper. So I, is some of this wet? Did you wet some yeah. of it? Yeah, yeah. So this is my first um, first go at uh, water soluble. 
which I used, I used water soluble on all of the brickwork. You did? Mm hmm So I would put it down dry. I, I did the whole brickwork dry first with all the, and I will tell you the color, the amount of color changes on, on this thing, just that was the hardest part is it wasn't just all the bricks were uniform. Nice. In color, right. There were a lot of color. And that's what was, that's what made the wall that attractive to me. But I put it all down dry and then, um, and then applied water and then applied colored pencil back on top of that for, for detail. So. so, um, so these bricks are kind of small. I mean, mm -hmm. did you just use like a, a teeny tiny bra? I mean, plus ink tents doesn't require a whole lot of water. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it. They it, are pretty vibrant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so did you just use a really tiny brush or some mm -hmm. other instrument? Yes. Yep. No, just a little tiny brush. And then, like I said, I, I went back over all of them uh, again with um, colored pencils, either luminance or pro color or crystal. So was color. the was the um, oh shoot, I forgot what uh, the mortar the mortar. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that just mostly paper? I mean, it's quite light, so that was like mostly paper. Yeah. No, that's just that'll be just um, just uh, colored pencil with no no water. The, all the water work was done. Uh, or the wet work was done uh, just on the brickwork itself, not the mortar in between or adding shadows or any of the, the door windows figure, anything like that. that was, the rest of it was entirely done with just, just dry colored pencil. And this was your photo? It was my photo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And did you take like one photo of this or were there a bunch of photos or how did... I, so I, no, I'm not one to take a hundred pictures of the same subject. I, I'll take a few, maybe three or four. And it's like, that's all I need. I've got it. Um, one thing I did do, and, and so you have to realize a lot of times my, the pieces, because there's so much realism, people think they're verbatim. Yeah, you know, that's how I saw the scene. But the door, for example, I didn't like the door that was in the actual building. And I took a, another photo, same the, of the building next door, just straight oh. on, just like this, just happened to, and I like that door better. So I basically took that door and put it in place here. Uh, you'd never know unless I told you. you okay. You'd never know there wasn't a figure there and a figure I added separately also. Okay. Just things like that. I, I like to do, um, with a lot of my works, I like to have a narrative or storytelling uh, I like to do that, but it's oftentimes because it's realistic, people will think it's verbatim and that's just how I saw the scene, but more than like, usually it's not. I, I will add things, remove things, and, and I will make up my own story um, with a composition with elements from different, different sources. Yeah, I mean, how many brick walls have I looked at with, with cool doors or windows and, you know, thought, oh, man, that makes such a great painting. But then I thought about the brick and thought, well, I'll let somebody else do that. So Jeff did. So that's cool. I don't have to. <laughs> I did, I did. And I added, so there's one more, I added one more image on this. And it's just a detail of some of the, some of the brick work so that uh, oh. people yeah, can I, I, Yeah, we'll take a look at that. But I want, before we do, I, the curb. The curb is just exquisite, especially with those um, grasses that, you know, I've, just, I've done grasses like that one time and that was it. No more, never again. And I see that you've done several here. Didn't, weren't those fun? They were, actually they were. Um, see, and the thing is, and I, it's funny, I like to challenge myself. I, I do. I, I always have. So yeah, you, don't, you didn't have to tell us that we knew that, Jeff. <laughs> That's kind of a given here. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry yeah. for stating. The you know? <laughs> so we'll take a look at the uh, detail. Yeah, and that's um, just the detail of it. So like I said, all the bricks were done uh, initially with water soluble, then gone over again uh, with dry colored pencil. Now, in that case, could you, could you put, can you put a light over um, a darker in one, ones, you know, with the ink tents? Oh, I mean, you can, it'll tint it, right? It, okay. It'll just, you can't get really light over it because of the translucency. Right, right, of right. But yeah, you can do it, it, you can punch it a little bit. 
Well, because I'm noticing like, well, even over here, say, well, mm -hmm. it's just easier to see over here. But like these little white dots within uh, a brick, I guess you left. Oh, out. no. Yeah, those were just left out, just non-painted in. <laughs> so. You really, you are really are a little bit crazy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Um, so now, is this this isn't burnt? Well, aren't all artists? Uh, um, oh no, I'm trying to lump everybody else. In. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. No. Um, so, are is this burnished? Uh, close to yeah. It's pretty, because oh. of the saturation of the um, of the water soluble underneath. Uh, yeah, it's it's a fairly heavy application of pencil on top, but it didn't need to be. You know, so it's not a real full burnish because of, uh, like I said, of the um, water soluble. Product. Right. So I mean, like the denim, right. that, that's not burnished, right? No. Uh -uh. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So now let's move to, whoops, I moved something I didn't mean to move. Uh, well, we'll, we'll do death rather. Such a cheery title. Right. Isn't uh, it? <laughs> my, my pieces are also cheery. <laughs> Death row. I mean, it's it's fabulous. So what, it, what made another you, older piece, right? Yeah, this is an older piece too. So what made you? Um, okay, so this one's a little different, and I'll I'll get inspiration different ways. And this one's a rarity for me. This was I was going to sleep one night. Was at that point where I was almost asleep, and then had an idea for a piece. I want to do something small. And just blow it up large, just draw it larger. Mm -hmm. What could, and in my, and I even, I thought, oh, some matches, uh, and not like a, a book, of, yeah. book of matches, but a box of matches. And I actually got out of bed, grabbed a pen, and I, I've shared this before, but I did a little thumbnail just on the pen. The only difference was the matches were uh, sketched upside down or in the other, the other direction with the box being at the top. Yeah. And I even made a little note to <laughs> rotate it and then wow. went back to bed and and ended up uh, seeing my little thumbnail the next day and thought, oh, this will be fun. Let me try this. So, but that's that that rarely happens. Usually um, the ideas come about a, a different way, not not in my sleep, not that often. Oh, so um, in looking at this carefully, I think it's like. And again, I'm not sure anybody online could ever see this, but after, you know, after the webcast, mm -hmm. I think, and when we send you, when we send you the video, I think we include a link to the Padlet so you can take a look yourself, but there is a little detail right here, the edge, the corner, as the box turns on the bottom right that shadow with a little bit of highlight, you know, even further to the right is so perfect. It just kind of gives you shivers. You know what I mean? Like, don't you love that right there? I, I didn't think about it, but thank you for pointing out. No, um, you really did it? That little, that turning? No, I, I, yes, it's there. I put it in, but I didn't, I, it's like, oh yeah, I didn't think about it. Really? It was just part of it. And, oh, it's just so and nice. at, at this point, when I was doing this one, I felt like I still wasn't, um, I, I felt like I was still feeling my way along with colored pencil a little bit. Yeah, this only had been the third or fourth, you know, sort of large thing I had done. So I, there was, uh, I remember um, hitting a little, some bumps here and there, uh -huh. but I uh, got through it. Yeah. And, so. Do you know if you won awards with this? I, I yeah I, I know if I did <laughs> no I, I did you did yeah 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 because it's like well you know it's unique for one thing and then death row when did how did you come up with that it's just so just well the idea obviously right it being that all the matches at some point are gonna gonna be struck and they they will you know be um expired yeah yeah Right. So um, oh, wow. I don't know how I thought of it. It just, it made me, it almost felt like the matches, it, I almost thought of them as people in a way, you know, or just standing there and awaiting something and that, uh, something like that probably kicked wow. in my brain. And, and some of my titles will come to me right away and others, um, I have to just, I'll 
think and think and think about and it'll take a lot of thought sometimes in our times uh, immediately and i know exactly what it's going to be yeah titling is well i think titling is so uh important it so we is. have the strip speaking of titles we have the strip club right. and beefcake <laughs> <laughs> i think i remember this i think i remember seeing this was this for something in particular so, so both of these were have been entered so these are more recent within the last both are done within the last five years and both were a little more experimental for me um in that uh they're both made with the uh, cpsa explore this show okay in mind and in that one you have to combine colored pencil with another medium right, right. so these are both over acrylic ink and then there's some small um, white uh, highlights. Um, and I actually have, there's gonna be one more coming. We are talking about a series and I, I've got one more idea on this and then that's it. And so my idea on this was just, I, I wanted to do something I thought was a little oh, frivolous. And oh, I wanted whimsical, to, yeah. Whimsical, yeah. Um, and I wanted to do it as, as pop art. I, so my, the idea is to essentially do this cooked meat as pop art. I'm like, look, if Warhol can do a, a can of soup, yeah, why not some some cooked meat? So, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I did end up the title. That's where the titles were important. And they just uh, were a lot of fun. And like I said, I, I have one more in mind and it might be uh, completed in the next year or two. I'll decide to do it. The bacon is so cool. Let's see, acrylic ink. I guess I don't know what acrylic ink is. Uh, I didn't. I didn't either. Oh. Oh, so I just found it. And <laughs> this is me experimenting. It, it's like a, it's like a liquid ink, a liquid acrylic. Let me flip it. Kind of like that. And they so called you, it acrylic ink, so I don't know if it had an ink base or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe some of some of the viewers can do some research on that. Get back to us. <laughs> so do have you used it since or was it no i've only used it on these two wow. these two things and, so and how, really and the funny thing is i only had um the primary colors i just bought the, and i just mixed them together to make uh the colors i wanted well that's interesting so how, how does it differ from ink tents like ink tents leaves you a lot of tooth it doesn't really fill things up i assume the acrylic ink doesn't either correct yeah, it's it's like it's thin enough. Right? Yeah, not a heavy body type of. So I just I'm just so like under the bacon, did you put like an orange? It's picture like a rough painting underneath, just a a rough painting. Oh, so a rough painting of bacon. So it was like a real like all the colors. Yeah, it's like an underpainting. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep, just a rough wow. underpainting of each, but really most of the detail. It, and it'll still look flat, um, but then most of the detail would be added on top with the uh, the colored pencil work. Mm -hmm. Fun, well, we look forward to number three. Oh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> How about the last day of May? Mm. Oh, wow. Have you wow. seen this one before? No, I have not. I don't have, I don't, I have, I don't, I'm pretty sure I would remember. So yeah, no, I don't think I've seen this. Poly, polychromos, luminance. Wow. Pebble gray color line. I don't know what color line paper is. It's similar to the Metantis. Oh, okay. Is it a little heavier? Maybe a little heavier. It has a little more texture, I think. Okay. And was it a white? No, it was gray. Oh, gray. Pebble I see, gray. I see. Pebble gray. Okay, got it. So the up in the upper left corner, the sky area, that's that's untouched paper. Oh, right? okay. And and so for me, I went on a little again, a small series where I did three or four pieces in grayscale. I always loved doing black and white and grayscale works. And I, I obviously I worked in pen and ink and graphite for years. And I, I just love just just doing the values is quicker. Um and so, yeah, I, I had shot this reference a long time ago. It was in Washington State. Um, I couldn't tell you where, somewhere in the western half of Washington. But, um, yeah, I had just, I, and I've done a few different images from that same photo session. 
I just saw this this place. Um, I just thought it was mysterious, and you know, it's it's funny. And when you start to do these uh, compositions, this one is pretty much verbatim, but I just it worked um, better to to keep it grayscale. The color didn't add anything to the piece, and I think it works better this way. And I, I had toyed a little bit with the idea of putting um, a silhouetted figure in the window and things like, you know, I, again, with the narrative. And this is one where I decided to not to do that. And it just made some small changes, but it's close to what I what I saw just in, in grayscale. Well, once again, my eyes drawn to the bottom where the grasses are. Like, maybe it's because I think, mean, like, honestly, the very, very bottom strip of a painting is all often like sort of not um, given all that much attention. And you, you seem to give every square inch of your pieces the an equal amount of attention. Yeah, yeah, I, I do, and it's I'm one of those um, background first people. Oh, yeah. Um, and the reason is, uh, for the reason you said, oftentimes you see people that if they have a, a center subject or, or they will spend um, all of their efforts on that main subject, right? The focal point. And, and then the, when it comes to the background, if they'll, they'll want to get it done so it'll feel rushed. Right. Uh, oftentimes with the background, that's, that's a little pet peeve of mine or a, a thing that I, I, at least with myself, that I try not to do. Right. Try to give the background equal, e always equal attention. Um, let's see, I have a question here. Are you able to move the video screen square below the info on the drawing? Are you able to move the video screen square below the info? I don't know what that means, doggone it. I think it means you're seeing something um, covering up something. Let's see. Oops. Is that it? Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything I can do. No. I don't know, but it, this is called, this is 24 by 18 and it's with Prismacolor and Marathon and Polychromos and Luminance and all so black, black and white pencils. But you mean, you also mean gray pencils, I would assume. No, no. Just what? Black, no, 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 just black pencils, just white pencils. What? Yes, <laughs> just black pencils, just white pencils. So any of the grays that aren't the paper are, are just a, a lighter or a, 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 or just the black pencil used in a different. So you paper. truly didn't like graphite. Uh, yes, you know. yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. I'm glad that came up because that's really shocking. No, and somebody had once asked me on this piece if I ruled out the actually used a, a ruler straight edge to rule the siding of the house and the answer is yes yeah i measured them out at, oh. to make sure i wanted them to be uh as close okay. to equal as, as possible mm -hmm. wow that's uh yeah uh, it's amazing i i could not i'm so color like color is just everything for me and um I, I'm quite certain I could never sustain that energy long enough to finish, especially because this is big, 24 yeah, by good. 18. Yeah, it's it's old. It's it's no long hasn't been mine for a few years. But that's uh, nice. All right, let's go to something with more color, and we will go to what so proudly we yeah. hailed. And actually, let's start with the. You want to start with my reference? Yeah, okay. I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> So, so my reference was taken in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay? Ah. And I was actually, we were headed to the airport and uh, there are three of us and I was sitting in the back and we we're just cruising around, had some time to kill. So like I said, let's just drive around. I want to shoot some, you know, just take pictures. And so uh, that's the picture on the right there is, yeah. the, and that's my actual photo reference that I took and you can see there's a few things there's like a gas meter and some posts down at, on the on the ground in front of a couple of the mannequins right down oh, there right so here. those were removed things like that and one thing I didn't notice until I I got home and looked at the picture on my computer 
was the nearby security guard, which I've now blown him up. And there, there he is encircled in blue. And there he is Hi. on the left. He was not happy with me taking taking photos. Uh, I, I think he must have thought I was up to something. But I was, I was just taking random posts and <laughs> never even saw him there. Uh, and that boy, he looks like a character and I, I'm uh -huh. glad I didn't have to mess with him. But uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, or, so now we'll go to, whoops. Oh. Yeah, and then there's the actual piece. There it is. Yeah. So. Wow. I mean, again, you just look at it and go, okay, so Jeff George is a little bit crazy. And so, it's just so much. So the most, this is the most uh, color changes that I've ever done in a piece. That's for sure with the dresses. And one thing, if you um, went back and saw the original reference, you'd notice in the top row for, oh, and you don't have to, but. <laughs> yeah, gonna, I, want, I want to that real quick. Uh, okay. Because okay. in the top row, go uh, from the left to right, you'll see like a bright orange dress right yeah. there. Or so it's not orange in mine. That's the color change. Like okay. it, I, I thought it needed some blue, had a, an abundance of orange in the actual reference. So I'll do things like that. You know, it, it, kind of and then I think this this blue and white one is a little further. Oh, it might be a little right. It, yeah, it's over here. Yep, it's oh, right I see. In, okay, okay. At the crop, and right. so one of the one of the odd things about this piece, um, and and again, I do little things like change the phone number a little just I didn't want to necessarily do advertising for the place so I'd, I'd change it a little bit um with if you count on the bottom row of mannequins if you count the number of legs okay or the the number of pairs of legs and then count the actual mannequins across they won't add up there will be one extra pair of legs <laughs> and this freaked me out when i was drawing it and i had to determine what to do the reason is right behind on the bottom the one with the sort of large orange dress right in the yeah. middle right behind that one right sort of at the left you can see a little bit of red peeking out right at sort of the breast area oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay. there was actually another mannequin uh, okay back behind it but you I zoomed in and zoomed in and I could not see see it at all other than that little piece on my reference so I had to make a big decision do I leave it out including the pair of legs yeah. or just leave it in and I, I just left it because yeah. I didn't think anybody had bothered to count but now they all know so wow what was uh was there anything fun about this for you fun yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't normally draw, um, you know, women. Well, <laughs> it's, I was going to say, I, I don't draw dresses and, and women's attire that much. Although I did do another piece with some high heels and a waste basket. So who knows? Uh, I was just, um, no, it was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, I, I like the pattern. I like sort of the repetition of the, the pieces hanging up. Um, I just enjoyed it. And it, Again, it had a lot of color, and this is one where I was going to make sure it was done on a white paper, so I could get the you know the full range right. of bright colors and all, all of that. So I knew it'd be a lot of work, but I thought it would uh, be worthwhile. Yeah, for me, this would be really fun because of the color, right? You like constantly yeah. changing color, and you yeah, know, yeah constantly and changing and colors, right? Yes. Except for the you know the mannequins, which would be a little hard to. It, because then you have to try to maintain the same color throughout. Right. Yeah, that seems like that would be tough. Yeah, that part was. Yeah. What so proudly we hailed. And it's a I, I've done a few with um, uh, titles taken from, you know, our national anthem. And <clears throat> the thought being that someday I'd have a whole series <laughs> again, a whole series. And a picture almost like uh, uh, the song playing or, you know, with, with lyrics and then a video, right? Of each piece displaying about five seconds during that line, right? And it was gonna be a whole thing. And they are, they're all similar in content. It's sort of these uh, urban scenes. Well, get on that. Hey, I've done three. <laughs> 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 you've got a ways to go yeah. so, um, 
but 16 by 20, that is a, that's a hefty piece. How long does a piece like this take you? Oh, I'm hundreds of hours, I'm sure. I don't, I, I used to keep track um, just so I had an idea or especially if it was for a show, but um, I don't so much anymore. I, I just pretty much, I, I kind of know if I'll be able to get something done in time or not. Uh, but essentially, I think I once calculated that every square went every square inch would take about an hour, uh, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. But as an average, I think a, about a, an hour per square inch. So you know, can you imagine telling saying that to a watercolorist? Maybe they just would ch shake their heads, and I mean, uh, I don't worry. I. I think if you want to try to produce something like this, you just can't worry about the time. You, right. you just you can't. You, know, you just do it for yourself. Do the do the best work you think you, you're capable of doing. Yeah, and too, because you enjoy it, right? I mean. Oh, absolutely. Right. All right, so we'll go on, and uh, we'll do. Let me see a little oil paint. Is this an excerpt? Well, that's that's oh. so the one on the right. That's the full completed piece, right there. Okay. Oh wow small it's it's a little oil 10 by 8 yeah that's a nice little size and ink tents first and then personal color on top and you have this on a cold press illustration board so it has quite a bit of texture i guess yep. built in yep, um, yep. this so, one's burnished yes yep so you got it <laughs> yeah it's it is it's a it's a burnished piece um small and that that surface illustration board is what i learned to burnish on and it's still one of my favorite uh oh. illustrate board is maybe my all all around favorite surface to work on I, I vary my surfaces a lot i don't work on the same thing I, right. over and over um, <clears throat> just like with my subject matter i like to try different things and uh it's one of my favorites and uh this another one i that i might do redo larger uh, just as a thought but if you go to the other one the other one it'll show the work in progress and then you'll kind of see there you go on on the left there's my superb uh <laughs> not uh painting uh underpainting on the left so that was after i applied the ink tents and applied some water and it's very rough um yeah and that's i mean i didn't i wasn't trying to necessarily come as close to the final i just needed some color saturated back there so the, um, uh, so again, that's a brush that you're using with the ink tents. Yes. And not a whole lot of water. No, well, I needed it to be dark, so I, I did apply the ink tents heavy in some of the darker areas in a moderate amount of water. And then over here, everything that we're seeing on the right is so colored pencil on top of of this uh, the first piece. Correct, and it's in progress. Also, right. I don't not all the details on the cans are done. Right anything like that but i wanted it I see, i've seen these oil paintings done with these very dark backgrounds and you know the this sort same sort of setup and i wanted to just i my, my goal was to make the finished art look like an oil painting yeah or similar to things i've seen done in oil but but all done in colored pencil so there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there. if people and people ask me if i oil paint and I pretty much have the same answer. And the answer is no, because it's not the 1600s. So there you go. <laughs> and because why put up with all that mess and smell? There's so many. Don't, we'll, we would need another yeah. hour. So. Somebody has asked. No, I, and I, I like it. I just think it's an outdated medium. Uh, Jacqueline has asked if you, uh, oh, whoops, I forgot it already. Uh, have you ever used an airbrush? I think you did mention earlier. So yeah, I hated it. Um, so yeah, I used to long ago when I was an illustrator. Um, uh, yeah, I, I started out with airbrush and um, I, I I prefer airbrushing in Photoshop than actual airbrushing. It's some, some there's no cleanup. Okay. That's the only thing I didn't like. My The thing I use now, and I'll use it on some pieces occasionally, um that i like and prefer to the airbrush a little bit is um the pan pastels uh, oh I, yeah I, yeah I'm, I'm getting into those and enjoying those yeah that's as, great as it, but i use them in the same way as i do the uh water soluble kind of as an underpainting 
So we just have a very few minutes and okay. I, I've been saving, you know, what I consider your ultimate work to last, but we still have this to get through kind of, uh, so we're going to do real quickly. So, oh, and Anna Cordes, you took hmm. this photo. So that was my original photo taken in 2009. Okay. Um, it went back a few years later and just happened i looked for the same building it's a long story it just because it was originally shot at night right. and i didn't even know where i was exactly when i shot it, but i found it wow. and i just shot it during the day just so you kind of see that's what the building looked like a few years later on the right yeah. and then I, what i rendered on the far left there. love it's just so like it is just so much better we can go look at the larger sure uh you know the art is oh my gosh the art is so amazing compared to the photos and that's the idea that's what yeah, i i know you. that's the idea right, so, right? It's, it's, it's like so oh it looks, like, looks better than the photo well that's the idea oh and i see like i was really noticing this texture especially like on the um i think it's an upside down boat or something mm -hmm, like. mm -hmm. um, and so i see that it's on a sanded board yeah i'm this is me experimenting on another surface. I'm not, I, I'm going to tell you, I struggled with it more. I'm not a big sanded uh, surface person. I love the intensity of the colors that you can get, but I, I sacrifice a little detail. Uh, and so I still try to get as much as I can, but I, I don't mind the texture. It's not that I, yeah. I like that. It's just working on it as, as um, opposed to a, a smoother surface. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous though, man. That sky. Yeah, and the sky was just heavy. Now uh, with the sky, you use some heat underneath. I used like oh. an Icarus board and on a sanded surface and I just like would bear down and I, it was just layers and layers of two different uh, luminance colors. Beautiful. And then the piece that just took my breath away because, you know, honestly, I mean, I look at it, I say, oh, and gee, that's incredible. And then I see the title. This is when I first saw it years ago. And then I go, wait, what is he talking about? And then the surprise Being, yeah. of the Grim Reaper there. Um, what on earth, Jeff? <laughs> what on earth made you okay. do this? This. All right. So the this is one of these that just came about um it wasn't pre-planned or anything like that so um what it was was uh many years ago i was you everybody's heard of comic con right yeah. down in san diego so i had taken my son and we went and enjoyed the day down in san diego at, at comic con and as we were leaving i was in my car and there were people going back and forth in a crosswalk in front of me. And I thought, oh, I have my camera. I'll just take photos because some of my friends that I work with at, at Lakeshore would love to see some of the costumed characters. Right? And that was really my reason for taking photos. So I took two, two photos of people crossing back and forth. One was actually a, a vertical or portrait format and the other was a landscape format. And it wasn't until I got home and really started looking at them on my computer, I'm like, oh, I might be able to make something out of this. And I just composited the two together. There was, if you notice the figure in front of the Grim Reaper, I think she she has like these little sort of Princess Leia hair yes. buns. I mean, you know, it's like there's little subtle giveaways yes. that it was yes. at Comic Con. Wait, um, I have to go back to the you because you have it. Yeah, okay. So yeah, here. there, there you go. Even better. So, um, there were all these uh, little things that I I didn't want to tie it into Comic Con. One guy was holding a a flyer, for example, and I changed that to a tarot card with the the the. Uh, Grim Reaper on it and all sorts of little fun things like that. And I will say this, um, the shawl that you see in this close up, is yeah. one of the hardest things I, I've ever done. And that, yeah. that one challenged me. It, it doesn't, may not seem like it, but it, it was, <laughs> I just, I had to be very, really patient and, I, and it just took a while and it was just gonna be done when it was done. And, um, and yeah. I finally got it. And I, what in, in all my portrait commissions, I had one piece, I had some ivy. It was just a little, I've done ivy before, but there sure. was this 
IV was like your shop. It, it just had to be done leaf right. by leaf. And it was just going to be awful. And I just had to slog through it. <laughs> that's, that's how this was. I yeah. just had to. And it doesn't look it. like it, Jeff. It looks like, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, for all the things you've done, it seems like this would be a piece of cake. I, I'm just telling you, that was, it was hard. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that is. By but, but the piece, yeah, that just came together. I, all it was was a couple pieces. And then the, um, there was actually a figure in costume back where the Grim Reaper was. I just, I had the, the idea of just kind of hiding, you know, it's like death walks amongst us, right? Uh, and um, I just wanted to make it subtle. I didn't want, I didn't want to put the Reaper front and center. Yeah, right? that's what, I mean, that's, that's what makes it right. I mean, that is absolute because you don't you don't notice it. You have to like really look or see the title, and and then right. then you have to then, then you, you wonder why, to look, right? You have to like why is he why is he talking about death? All I see is life. Um. So yeah, I think when I saw this, I thought, oh, he's a twisted guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you still think that? <laughs> yeah, because that is. I mean, I love the story behind it because it's so innocent. You know, you're just like taking a picture for your friends. Yeah, absolutely. That's all this was. And there were, I only did, I only took two shots and yeah. combined them together. Yeah. I think I added one face uh, in the background from a different image I had taken, but it's all my, all my uh, photography and just yeah, little, yeah. you get you, so many things once you get into it and start uh, doing it. So the, the one figure uh, near where the cursor is um, in black, in the black t-shirt is holding a card down at the right so yeah. that's one I replaced with a tarot card being the okay. deck so and I just thought it was interesting he was sort of looking toward that you know just All right. little little fun things it was actually right. just some advertisement or something that he was holding and uh it, it was a lot of fun yeah well I mean to do this many people do you know how many people are yeah here? it was like 32 I oh can't my remember. gosh <laughs> no, and because I remember being like, okay, I'm at, I'm at 28. I just have four left. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was something like that. I, yeah. Now, yeah, well, I, I know you had to win award after award with this. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was, yeah. it's been a real successful piece. Yes. Yeah. Somebody has asked, uh, Karen has asked uh, that your pieces on um, me, Tien, look so smooth how do you get that effect with such a textured paper well use the smoother side of the yeah. paper for one and keep the pencils really sharp that's really that's those are the only tips i can yeah have. and um she asked when you when you take when you use pictures of people do you have to get releases to use them in your work yeah, and, and so i i i think so for for portraiture or something like that if it's a i don't know if it's out in the um uh, uh, what is the general public, public yeah right something like this I, they had no clue they were being photographed i didn't even i know none of them yeah. uh that would be impossible to do i think i've seen a, a painter who does these big scenes of crowds at fairs and things like that and it's like there's no way yeah. you know, obviously they can do that I think that's right that you're just out in the public and so you're yeah you're, you're granting you know access to yourself yeah well jeff um that hour flow that's I it mean, oh my gosh didn't it fly part two part two no, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get to see the mountain teeth. Um, we just did the early years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we are looking for number three of your meat. Uh, yes. And, and, the next last, and the last minute and a half of the national anthem or wh whichever, wh whichever, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, a couple more of those. For yeah. Me. So when you're done with those, let me know. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll look connect up. again. <laughs> you got it. Well, thank you very much for sharing all of that with us. And it was a lot of fun. And, and hey, and thank you for doing these. I, I appreciate it. And I'm sure the, the world of colored pencil appreciates it. Yeah. And for me, they're just lots of fun. So, I mean, I just, I still get, it just boggles my mind that we can sit here and you're in Idaho and I'm here and who knows where everybody is that's listening and we I'm all sure. get to share. So that's, I just think that's so cool. So, I agree. It's a yeah. great technology.
Thank you, Jeff. And we never even touched on my AI. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Well, listen, can you do it in Next a few time. minutes? So, so AI in art is real big right now. And they're artificial the, intelligence in correct, art. Correct. Artificial intelligence. And they're beginning to paint and they're improving and they're improving and they're improving and they're improving. And they are now, um, based what? on the information put in them, they're getting as good as we are. Um, so my prediction, and this we'll see if this comes through, my prediction is that um, at some point, illustrators, for example, will no longer be needed, that uh, companies that need art like that will have the uh, Artabot 9000 or whatever it is to create their own. They'll just put in whatever criteria they want, and it'll spit out what what is needed. And um, And I could see it coming into the the fine art world as well. However, my, my thought is, are you ready for this? It, it's going to improve just with everything else that they've, they've said, oh, it'll never take over. And then it does and right. it gets better. Is So what if I'm thinking, what if I did a directive uh, before, I, before I depart this earth and, and I basically have 50 pieces and I have fully detailed instructions on what they are to look like, little thumbnails, sketches, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then uh, my directive is that after I've expired that they will continue to be created, right, right? So you can still create art. You're like the art director, right? And you're, you've got all the input and it essentially does it for you based on everything that you have put in. You could release one a year for the next 50 years, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Anyway, we'll see if this happens or not. I, I also think it'll make hand drawn or hand painted uh, fine art even more valuable, since it would not be constructed partially by a machine. It's hard to thing. it's hard to predict, you know, because if you can get if you if you can walk into a gallery and say, I've got a purple sofa, so I need a piece yeah. X big and this one. And well, it needs to have this, and and I want these grapes from this photo I took from Italy. And if they can knock out, you know, in a gorgeous. Well, let me put it: if companies uh, and businesses and can produce their own art, uh, you know, just and they don't have to hire out or pay out for uh, for original art, they'll they'll do it. Yeah, so that's yes. my thought. Anyway, well, we'll I, see. I didn't know AI was out there painting. painting it's getting, stuff. it's improving and improving yeah. fast. And we it's have, we've just about become obsolete, haven't we? <laughs> I'm trying not to be. <laughs> well, thank you again. It was Thanks, great. Sarah. And thank, thank you all for coming and listening to us today. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.